Welcome to another 3D printer review video. This is Artillery Signwider X4 Plus, and this box is sent to me by the Artillery 3D in exchange for the review. I was hesitating if I want to accept this printer for the testing, and I even started a poll on my YouTube channel. And this is the result, so I'm expecting at least, let's say, 400 views here. Interesting that all my earlier Artillery 3D printers, most of them are donated to my daughter's schools. <laughs> Recently, my middle daughter started a university, and uh, if they need one, they will get this one. But of course, we will see how it performs. The reason for this is actually that all those Genius Pro uh, Artillery X2 Sidewinder are the quietest printers I ever tested. And somehow we lost this property <laughs> with the new fast printers. Probably here they also concentrate more on the speed but we see how quiet is it. Let's see some specifications. The build volume is 300 by 300 millimeters in XY direction and 400 millimeters in Z direction. This is fast clipper-based bed slinger and it is able to move on 500 millimeters per second speed. It has a modular linear rails and it is able to heat up the nozzle to 300 degrees Celsius, the bed to 100 degrees Celsius, and it is able to print the bench in 15 minutes. It has 4.3 inch nice touchscreen but let's unbox it and see how it performs. This is the base of the printer. It's really massive and it looks like this is some kind of textured PEI sheet. On the front we have the Type-C and regular USB plugs. Here properly this is for the screen and for external antenna. Then we have the stiffening rods. And finally again we have a toolbox. The grip is not the best, but it's functional. This is the complete gantry with the Z-axis. There I can see some LED lights and uh, two Z-axis have the two lead screws and two separate motors. And I can see they are synchronized with this timing belt on the top. The spool holder with the filament sensor, the touch screen, tools and bolts for the assembling scraper, <laughs> sample filament without spool. Then we have this resonance compensation module, you know, for the input shaping. And here are some instructions how can we mount it to the bed. This is a spare nozzle, it looks like Vulcano nozzle, but I'm not 100% sure, but I know that they use the Vulcano with X2, for example. It's time for the installation, uh, but the nozzle is on the way, I have to lift it higher. Installing the spool holder. Just a small note, these holes are in the center and this part of the spool holder, but the spool itself will be moved to the right. To me, it much more logical would be if the spool itself would be in the center. Not a big deal, we can use the regular T-nuts here because this is uh, ordinary alloy extrusion, but it would be much nicer if this would be solved in the factory. And of course, the position of the filament sensor should be aligned too. Installing the screen. Antenna for better Wi-Fi connection. Now I notice we have the nozzle cleaner on the back side. Connecting the cables, but first I have to remove this protection from the stepper motor plug. Looks like one cable is unused, but I believe that's for the input shaping, so we don't have to plug it to the main board. Cable management for the Y-axis, this is very good solution. The rest is, well, let's say, acceptable. Installing these tension rods, sometimes they are preset in the factory, but here I need to do some adjustment. Small correction from my intro, they use the linear rails on X and Y axis, but on Z axis they use these rubber wheels. Let's turn it on and to see how quiet is it in standby mode and to check the moving of the axis. Hmm, this first step is confusing, why would we like to go to the boot interface, but okay. Uh -huh, it will do some kind of self-check now, okay. First noise impressions during the self-check. It is not so quiet like Genius Pro or X2, but it is much quieter than most of those uh, Core XY printers. But I will measure the noise during the printing. Currently is checking the bed heating, and this bed has nice thermal insulation from the bottom. And now setting the ZO set with this leveling paper and that uh, friction between the nozzle. <laughs> Be careful, because we have to do this with the very hot bed. Auto bed leveling with preheated bed on 60 degrees Celsius and nozzle is 160 degrees Celsius. Now it asks for some filament. I hope it will be enough for the testing at least. See what I mean. <laughs> at least the loading is very smooth. It already grabbed the filament. And there is it on the other side. 
Inside the memory card or U disk. Well, I didn't know that it has a slot for the memory card. Oh, it's covered. Finished. This was quite long calibration in eight steps, but the only manual part was setting the Z offset, you know, with the paper friction method. Now, if I connect to the network, in that case, I can manipulate the printer over my computer, but this keyboard is not for human fingers. Wi Fi connection success. It's connected, only didn't work with the 5 GHz network, only with 2.4, and this is the IP address which I can enter into the browser and then I can supervise it over the laptop, or as in this example, over the smartphone until I'm connected to the same network. Let's prepare the surface, clean it with isopropyl alcohol, and this is two-sided textured PI sheet and it has nice aligning pins so we can easily place this back in the same position. Now let's print something. Hmm, I cannot see end of the file names, both, maybe this is the Benchy. Printing time 18 minutes. Okay, let's try it. But even now I cannot see the full name. It started with cleaning the nozzle in the corner and now it's printing properly the Benchy, but it was too fast, I couldn't record that. This is the information we can see on the screen, quite a lot of setting possibilities. Only one thing I am missing here and that's the current Z coordinate, for example and maybe scrolling of the name so you can see the end of the file name. Let's measure the noise from exactly half meter distance from the hot end. Approximately 59 decibels. That's quieter than most of those correct swipe printers, but not so quiet like its older brothers, unfortunately. It's a really good progress after 10 minutes. The chimney is the last element. Oh, it's finished. Immediately bad adhesion check. Which is okay, good until it's hot. I will wait until it cools down. In the meantime, I can remove the purge line. Yes, adhesion is okay. The bed cooled down a little bit. Okay, perfect. This is that bench, or how they call it, boat, because this is not the original file. I can see here that they removed that text from the bottom so it has better contact surface, but this is not the original bench then. Also, I can see a little bit more stringing. But this is their filament, I mean, maybe it has some moisture, but this was in a package. And also I can see here some strange under extrusion on this side. I'm not quite sure what is this, but it's time to prepare the slicer and test with my own G-code. But very big plus for this printer, when it finishes the printing and it cools down, it has completely silent standby position. Instruction for Orca Slicer, I have to download this file and then I, I can go to the configuration folder. And I have to copy those files in these folders to overwrite existing ones. And then I have this profile, this new printer is added to the Orca Slicer. And this calibration dice will be the first object, expanding the G-code and uploading the G-code over the fluid interface. And then I can start the printing. The printing looks very slow because of that minimal layer printing time. I even increased the speed to 150%. Printing is finished a few seconds ago. Bed adhesion check, good. The bed cooled down to 40 degrees Celsius. Ah, oh, perfect. Now let's check a few dimensions. Along Z axis, 20.07. Along the Y axis, 19.93, a little bit smaller. And along the X axis, it's accurate. Surface quality is good too, but it is hard to present it on the white filament. Later, I switch color. The next object will be this gear bearing, but printing time two and a half hours. <laughs> Finally, I could catch the nozzle cleaning. Purge line. And now it starts with the printing. From the front side, it is hard to see anything, especially at the beginning. <laughs> the view from the back side is better. For this gear bearing, it is important to be printed accurately, a little bit bigger flow and I cannot move it. Oh, now I notice we have a nice preview image. I changed the print speed to 150%, but it didn't recalculate the print times. The object is almost finished, it covered the top lines now, but then I noticed this error, and also I noticed that this filament run-on sensor works. But theoretically this line should be enough, but just in case. Unload. Feed. 
Now the problem is that this should do on the corner, not above the object, but we will see what happens. Properly I will have some oozing lines. I immediately continue with the printing. <laughs> this will be an interesting finish of the object. It is nice to see that filament runner sensor works correctly, but this printing was two and a half hours, which is too slow. I have to repeat again, fantastic feature when it cools down, it's completely silent. Oh, first attempt, perfect. And this is that oozing on the filament change. But actually it looks very interesting. <laughs> About this printing time. I hate this trend that the manufacturers are forced to put some kind of marketing speed, which is maybe some kind of maximal traveling speed on the website, but a real printing speed is significantly lower. For example, this uh, Gerber ring I can print on Bebole printer in one hour, here two and a half hours. Don't forget that I used the stock profile from the company, I didn't change anything, I used a different setting, so I believe that it can print much faster, but the company should prepare correct profiles. I believe that by time the community will create some good profiles for this printer, but for that probably we have to wait three months. Very important correction. I noticed this only now, but I want to leave this in the video. I was preparing my next printing, the hour, and only now I noticed that the different layer height is 0.08 millimeters. And when I change this to the 0.2 millimeters, those printing ties significantly reduces. And now it is very similar like Bamboo Lab or other similar printers. I'm not sure if this is really my mistake because uh, usually we print with 0.2 millimeter layer height. So maybe the different settings should be this. For this object, different printing time is more than 7 hours, and if I change the layer height to 0.2 mm, the print time reduces to 3 hours and 20 minutes. The start is good. The printing is exactly at 50% and I have to leave home. I hope I can trust this printer. I am back home. The printing is ok and it will be finished soon. The printing is finished. I mean, this is very easy printing. No need to check the surface quality, which is ok. Maybe a few strings I can see here, but what is more important that it was printed in 3 hours and 20 minutes. These are battery holders boxes and everybody who sees them wants one for themselves. So since that I am printing them as a gift and uh, these are printed from the ABS, but uh, PTG will be fine. Since after the charging the battery may be hot, uh, I don't recommend to print this from the PLA. And this is Amazon Basics PTG. And the filament is changed. Let's check the different settings for this material. 250 on the nozzle and 90 will be on the bed and here you can see the different cooling settings. The start is good. This object has very small contact surface at the beginning. The printing is at 25% and um, this will be finished during the night because I'm going to sleep now. Good morning. The printing is really nice. Oh, the bed adhesion is still very good. But removable. And properly the dimensions are correct too. I'm not sure if it's visible on the screen too, but this 90 degrees Celsius on the build surface was too much for this PTG and this material, or I should use some separation layer here. One last test for this video will be the TPU filament, and this is a Polymaker TPU 90, which is closer to the softer side, and all earlier earlier printers and their extruder were really good with the TPU filaments. The filament is changed. Different settings for this TPU. On the NASA 220, which is ok, but 70 on the bed. I'm reducing this to the 40 and also I'm reducing the flow rate to 8. The cooling is uh, maximal by default. And of course I have to change the layer height to 0.2 mm. This is a little bit weird. It is heating up the bed to 60 degrees Celsius to do the homing or something like that. But later during the printing it has to cool down to 40 degrees Celsius. I think this should be corrected. It, we don't need heating up to 60 degrees Celsius if we print on lower temperatures. The nuts are cleaning, purge line, and it starts with the printing. I can see there is some stringing, but this is typical for the TPU. And what I don't like, the temperature on the bed is set to 40 degrees Celsius, but it is cooling down very slow. Currently it is almost 60 degrees Celsius, which uh, is not good for the TPU. 
This is Mickey Mouse Poppet toy. I'm experimenting a little bit with the Poppet mechanism. The printing is finished. I can see a few strings between these elements, uh, but I worry about the removing of the objects because during the start of the printing it was 60 degrees Celsius. But okay, it looks like it's coming down. Okay. But not easily. Ah, and it's down. Yes, quite a lot of stringing, but this is quite odd filament. Probably I should dry it. But let's see if it works. Mm, works. Not too enjoyable. I also tried to connect the camera. This is ordinary Logitech web camera. But the problem is that we have only one ordinary USB plug here. So if I want to use the USB pen drive, in that case I don't have a space for the camera too. And just minimal settings in the fluid, I have to enable the camera. And after this I can see the picture. Overall, if you like bed slingers, I can highly recommend this printer. It has big volume, good price and robust structure. It reminds me a little bit on Sidewinder X2. At that time it was the base of many 3D printing farms with a reason and this can be even better, but of course we are limited to PLA, PTG and maybe TPU. On the software side I can see space for the improvement. Small details like we cannot see any of the file names. On the G-code which was prepared by the manufacturer, we cannot see the thumbnail images. I mean this is one of the first things which we new user experience when it turns it on. I mean if I prepare my own G-code in Orca Slicer, I can see those images there, but on the base G-code it's not there. Default slicer settings should be think over immediately the layer height. Uh, the default is 0.08 millimeters. I think this should be changed to 0.2 millimeters. And uh, especially those uh, different materials like uh, TPU, PTG, bed temperatures. 70 degrees Celsius for the TPU is way, way too much, even for the texture PI sheet. And of course, if you have some other experience with this printer, write me down in the comment section what's your opinion about this printer. Thank you for watching and happy printing!